Why would you give young children real hammers and saws? And how do you manage the health and safety implications? Marion Cairns, Early Years Development Officer for North Lanarkshire Council, explains. The children were inspired because they had a delivery of sand to the nursery and the children weren't inspired by the sand, they were inspired by the big digger that was delivering the sand. So they had that interest in machines and technology and big industrial equipment. So from that we took them to Summerlee Heritage Museum where they actually were able to really explore all these big uh, machines and look at all the technology behind it, climb on steam engines, engage with all the machinery and really start to explore the technology behind it. We then took them to b and when they were at b &Q, they chose tools and materials which would help them to recreate those kind of structures and materials and, and moving parts. And then the outdoor environment was set up in a way that they could reflect on their experiences and begin to um, build their own structures and make their own machines according to their own innate kind of ideas of what it was that they, that they had seen and thereby make sense of it. How did you make a machine like that? As an authority, we've trained our staff in risk assessment and we've got a great health and safety department that, that supports us and everything. So we're all signed up to the benefit risk assessment rather than risk assessment to stop people doing things. That's the starting point. Yes, there's nails and hammers and there's saws, but those are the tools that the children need in order to achieve what it is they have in mind. So therefore, the risk assessment is the thing which should empower staff to say, well, yeah, these are risky pieces of equipment. They are potentially hazardous, but we can put control measures in place. And here are the control measures. They're agreed amongst the team. And the best of practice, they're also agreed with the children. So the children don't have a risk analysis done for them. They are engaged in the risk analysis themselves. And therefore, they're they're stronger and more able to use them appropriately. So when we go outside, we'd ask you to form yourself into, say, about four groups. Is that all right? And then in each of the four groups, we'll give you an inspirational starting point, and that's when you really have to get your brain working. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Have it coming off of a thing like that, another one, so that you've actually got somewhere something to turn. You do need sources of heat. We're not suggesting for a minute that we send people out and we don't let them back in to any kind of warm, comfortable environment. We believe strongly in a free flow play environment where children can access the indoors and the outdoors and exchange the, the learning from both environments. We're supporting staff in building fires outside safely and appropriately so they can have hot orange juice, they can have toasted banana outside. We need to look at clothing and we need to make sure that being outside is a comfortable experience, challenging but comfortable. We've looked at the, the principles about uh, challenge and enjoyment, depth, uh, personalisation and choice, all those things because that's the essence and that's how we should plan our experiences for children and then after that we've looked more closely and said well actually because they've been involved in this adventurous rich experience they have actually been learning about technology we've really supported their health and well-being and they have been involved in expressive arts as well because of the creativity involved. The multi-sensory aspect that makes children want to learn more and investigate more and once they get that part of it then they start to create their own learning. I know I feel sometimes I've got to get out of here and I'm sure the children do as well. The sky's the limit. Literally, there's so much that a child can do outdoors in every aspect. You don't need specialist skills to be outdoors. What you do have to do is be motivated and empowered to see the potential of the outdoors. In terms of young children, they can sleep outdoors, they can have snacks outdoors, they can be fed outdoors. Older children can take advantage of the urban environment and the industrial environment that they live in, which is, is natural to them, it's where they've grown up. There is absolutely nothing that you cannot do outdoors. Grounds for Learning is a Scottish charity dedicated to helping you to teach effectively outdoors. Visit our website to find out how we can support you through our training, resources and advisory services.